And now we are moving to the first round. You mean they are not uh, with the company representatives? And so I'm very happy to uh, to introduce you uh, our uh, recruiters. Uh, that's to say, Stefania Bertone, head Merck site in Ivrea, Pietro Presti, Eastern Ventures, Tullio Genova and Sara Petrilli. Me, they are not. Web. So. They are used every year, as you know, maybe um, some of you have already participated to me they are not about round tables with the recruiters and phd holders are uh, always organized by our uh, and promoted by our doctoral schools to, to facilitate uh, to help uh, phd students to prepare their next professional step to uh, and to also to to build a, a valuable professional network and uh, so, me, they are not. Uh, one of our recruiters, uh, Roberta Costantini, unfortunately cannot be here today to, uh, due to the strike. And so we are going, she's already here. And uh, we are going to uh, leave her the floor. But first of all, let me introduce Stefania Bertone, uh, site head Merck. And I'm giving you the floor just for a few words. With me, they are not. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm happy to meet you. I'm happy to have the opportunity to meet students. Uh, my name is Stefania Bertone. I am the site head of Merck site in Ivrea. Merck is a German company in uh, biotechnology, life science, and electronics. Is uh, the most uh, uh, ancient company me, they are not. Uh, in the world. We have 350, more than 350 now year of history behind us. And uh, I'm very happy to introduce Roberta. Roberta Costantini is uh, a colleague and uh, she is our partner for the whole country in Italy uh, for talent acquisition and recruiting. Roberta? Me, they are not. Can you hear me? We can hear you. You can you hear us? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Amazing. Okay. So thanks a lot for inviting me. And uh, sorry again not to be not to be there. And uh, I mean, I I've heard with um, attention the presentation of previous colleagues. So I, I would really like you to put in a recruiter shoes no? because I have been a recruiter since okay. more than. Roberta, just a minute. Mm -hmm. They are not. I think that I have to ask. Uh, uh, there are some technical problems. Just sure. Just a minute. Okay. Rabbi, adesso meglio. Okay. Prova a parlare. So. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Molto it's meglio. Okay. It's fine now. Okay. Me, they are not. Yes, set. Uh, well, just I just into the Roberta Costantini. Okay, and. Uh, give you the floor uh, if you can uh, uh, so you are a professional in the field of recruitment uh, dealing with uh, dealing with phd uh, that's why we decided to invite her so she uh, she's going to give you also some piece of advices uh, to prepare your uh, your survey a, a job interview etc what are you expecting from your for our me, they are not from PhD in general. Uh, what is the difference between a PhD and non a PhD? And uh, just a few words about your 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 position. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you hear me well, uh, I will shortly repeat what I've said. So uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. And uh, um, I, I really would like you to put in the in the recruiter life shoes because uh, to be honest, it's a hard life. Um, first of all, you have to imagine that that we can I move forward. Can you hear me? Lucia? Yes. 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 Me, they are not. Okay. So first of all, you have to imagine that 
being a recruiter in a company like Merck means managing more or less 20, 30 positions per month, which means that a, a large amount of screening to be to be done every day because we don't have, not many companies has the algorithm or artificial intent, intelligence to do screening, but we do screening by ourselves. Um, in the majority of the cases in the scientific, in really scientific aspects, no, we, we, we need to, uh, to, lay, to liaise with our hiring manager. Me, they are not. And if from, from a scientific perspective, uh, a resume in paper has um, the right uh, requirements to, to be moved forward in the recruitment process. Okay. So I, I have been, uh, uh, I have been working as a recruiter since um, uh, for, for many, many years, for, for 14 years. And I have been uh, a recruiter for um, very different me, they are not from, from bank, insurance, uh, fast moving consumer goods, uh, consulting. And now, uh, from, since five years, uh, for, um, I'm a, I'm, have, have been working as a recruiter for Merck. And um, this means that every day I, I get in touch with uh, all kinds of candidates from really, really young, uh, neo graduated people to really, really experienced people like executives. And Me, they are not touch with many, many PhD, uh, of course, as Lucia said. Um, and do yes, I see a difference now between uh, who who has a P, who has um, got a PhD and who who not. Um, but my suggestion overall is the same for everybody, you know, Fr from young people to senior people. Um, I always suggest to face the the interview. You mean they are not is a. Uh, uh, a way of awareness, no? the, 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 the more you are aware of your strengths and weaknesses and uh, development areas or what you would like to do in the future, the best the interview will go and the, the more chance you have to convince recruiter uh, firstly, and then uh, from a second round perspective, hiring manager and so on. So let me let me explain. Me, they are not. Um, in what a recruitment process consists of in a, in a company like Merck. So first step is to pass the, recruit, the, the, the screening and we receive around as average, we receive a hundred resume per position. Sometimes could be 300, sometimes could be 20, sometimes could be 600. But believe me, we, we really uh, receive a, a huge amount of screening. They are not of resume every day for the position we are handling. And we really need to go very fast. So this means that I have, in average, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to look at a resume. And it's that in that 20 seconds or 30 seconds, I need to understand if the resume is fitting or, or not, is matching or not with the, with the job requirements. Okay, so me, they are not repeat the, 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 the advice that the colleague, the previous colleague already shared with you, but really be brief, be precise, be, be uh, how can I say, in, be um, really to make your uh, resume really feasible to be read, to be read, because we really don't have much time to, to, to screen all the resume that we receive and highlight the me, they are not skills from, from from scientific technical it depends on the position you're applying to obviously but highlights maybe also in, in bold um the hard skills that you have and customize a little bit then to the to the job position you are looking for so read carefully at the job description and highlight in the resume the majority of the skill as possible uh, to make your resume mm, me, they are not no, uh, mm, matchable with, with, the, with the position. Second, there are many, many kinds of interviews. Okay, there, there is not only an interview. Let me share my presentation so you can see what I mean. Please let me, me they are not my screen. Yes, yes.
Okay, perfect. I see everything perfectly. Thank you. So, do you know that we have more or less five types of interview kinds? No, Ty types of interviews. So, telephone interview, which uh, should be kept really seriously because it's not only uh, a, a quick chat by phone. Maybe it could be a, a real interview. It could be your chance to to be moved forward in the recruitment process. Me, they are not. Have the face to face video interview, which as well, um, post, I mean, in in the post COVID area is uh, really really frequent. Now, it's normal for the company to hire people uh, only via video interviews compared to the past. No, where where we, where we ask to to candidates to to come in presence. Uh, more than once and and then so pr prepare yeah, for for the video interview for me they are not for the video interview as it, it is a face to face interview so it's absolutely the, the, the same no so take care of the context take care on on everything you would have they taken care of if, if you were in presence then we have the panel interviews which is normally an interview where you as a candidate are in front of a panelist, uh, are in front of a panel of interviewers. Normally, they are not the, the, inter the panel interview is contacted by one of them. But please take care of everybody, because if everybody is there, there is a reason. So you should have a, at least a contact highs with everyone in, in the panel interviews you, you are attending to. The digital interviews is another thing, again, is something that normally is managed by artificial intelligence. So, so you are basically you are in front of, me, they are not of a camera and you are explaining who you are and what are your skills and so on. And uh, an algorithm and, and intelligence, um, artificial intelligence will uh, evaluate you and will pass you to the, to the next step or not. And then we have the assessment center which is a, a group interview in which you have not only to face interviewers or panelists, but you have uh, to face me. They are not. So you have to face other candidates uh, which are applying for the same role as you applied for. So this means that normally in, in that kind of situation, recruiters would like to understand and to discover how you interface with others. If you are uh, too much competitive or not, if you are uh, a team worker or not. Um, and, and the most important suggestion that we as a recruiter normally give in that situation, me, they are not act, please act, do everything do you like, would you like to do, but act. Otherwise we don't have any chance to evaluate you in, in, in the context. Is that clear? Is there any question? Can I move forward? Just let me know. Me, there are no questions. Maybe can we have your slides? Can you send us your slide at the end? Uh, is it possible? Because sure. it is frequent questions after. <laughs> sure, absolutely, Lucia. Can I move forward with the presentation? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. So, um, um, I would say more or less, um, that the interview steps for you as a candidate are three. One step before the interview to take place. The second step is during the interview and the third step is at the end of the interview. So if you are attending a recruitment process, you should carefully prepare for each of these three steps and please take into consideration that in the majority of the cases, the person um, uh, who will interview you will be a recruiter, a recruiter like myself. So a, a person who uh, does not have any idea of, of the scientific topic uh, you are required to, to practice when, when you will join the company, or I don't know, um, uh, it's not expected to, to know nothing about uh, Me, they are not rolling or nothing about uh, accounting. I mean, the recruiter normally considers um, an holistic view, which is based on a mixture of, uh, yes, hard skills, but hard skills, it's not in charge of recruiter to evaluate 
the, the hard skills needs to be evaluated by the line manager or the hiring manager. Okay. Basically, the, the recruiters has an holistic view they are not consideration and mix of different aspects. So for sure, before the interview, in order to convince the interview to, to move to be moved forward in the process, read the job description carefully and read carefully information about the company. You don't know how you can't imagine how many candidates arrive at first round interview with myself me they are not knowing nothing about the company even mismatching company uh, for, for which they are attending the, the interview with other companies with same names with different names um, in, in some cases candidates ask to myself to tell them something about the company um, in, in, in some cases even they ask me to prepare a, a, a slide to explain to them for which company they applied for. So you mean they are not absurd from, from our perspective is something that, uh, I mean, even if you are the best in, in your scientific or hard skills aspect is something that would never allow us to move you forward in the process. So please <laughs> show uh, that you are motivated for the company you are you are applying for you are attending an interview for that you are informed you mean they are not that you really know uh i mean the contents the environment um and the majority of the information as possible regarding the company and obviously and obviously you need to review your experience and skill to be prepared to face the interview because doing the interview for looking at job is a job itself. So you need to practice and practice to be um, really, how can I say, pop me, they are not the, um, and show self-confidence and the awareness of your skills, which does not mean that you don't have any, any weaknesses, which that does not mean that you don't have any, anything to develop, but it means that you really know what are your best and your worst? What are your strengths and your weaknesses? And you are prepared to, to, to work on them. Okay. The kind of question that we normally do in, Me, they are not in our first round interview as a recruiter are hard skill based question in the meaning that, um, in the meaning, not, not that we are skilled or experienced in that question, but that for example, sometimes the hiring manager asks us to check a little bit um, how confident the candidate feels in, um, I don't know, uh, chromatography, such, for, for example, no, is, is a technique in me, they are not critical uh, industry. Um, the soft skill based question are the core of our interview and are the ones that are, um, how can I say, important for, for every kind of role you are applying for and are normally decision making, problem solving, team working, what kind of behavior you normally act in your daily working life. You mean they are not national question are linked to, to the to the one that that, that I explained uh, previously. So how much are you motivated to get the role in that company? because the same role is offered for many other company. But why are you motivated to get the job in that company? This is an important question and it's important for recruiter, but it, it is most important for hiring. Me, they are not so please take this really seriously. And obviously a value based question. So what really uh, matters for you? Uh, I don't know, are you uh, passionate about environment? Uh, are you passionate about um, health? Are you passionate about respect, integrity or whatever counts for you? This is something that you need to share in your interview because every company has me, they are not of values. And this is important that you match and the company matches with you in terms of values as well. The question of career plan is a question where the majority of candidates doesn't know how to reply. 
So they don't have any idea in the majority, not the majority, in many cases, they don't have any idea of what they will do in the future. But it's something that is important to share with the recruiter because otherwise mean they are not won't know um, how long you would ideally stay in the company. If you are going to, to, to go away in a, in a, a year, or, or basically um, you have no idea uh, of what will be your career plan. This means that maybe the recruiter can understand if a role, a managerial role, for example, is fitting with you or not. Because if you don't any, have in mind Me, they are not become, that you will, would like to become a manager in the future, this means that maybe a managerial position does not fit with you or, or with your expectation. So absolutely be prepared on this question because it is a critical one. And then we have any other question that normally normally we, we ask. So some of, some of them I already share. And normally I, I do love ask me they are not what in, in their professional life uh, really put them outside of their comfort zone. And this is a question where really candidates sometimes look at myself like this and, and tell me nothing. I, I'm always in my comfort zone. Okay, this is a, a bad reply to this question. <laughs> you should be prepared uh, on how to, to, to reply to a tricky question like this. Me, they are not to, to understand uh, which situation are tricky for you and which not. Uh, simple simply because uh, not every job is the perfect match with, with us. Uh, maybe some job, yes, and some other job, no. But this does not mean that you are not a good fit in general. Maybe you are not a good fit for that position. Maybe you will be a perfect fit for other ones. Okay. Me, they are not Thank you so much for such an, an inspiring uh, present, brilliant presentation. And so uh, be concise. Uh, I hopefully have learned uh, from, from a presentation. Be concise. Me, they are not quick study, study your employer before uh, uh, be invited for, uh, for an interview. Uh, Roberta, hi. Any questions? I have a question. Any question from the audience? Uh, maybe uh, in one final, one final key message. Can you hear us, Roberta? Yes. Sure. Me, they are not. One final key message. A few words. What are you expecting from a PhD? And one final key message from them. They are. They have to prepare a job interview. They, they, sooner or later, they, they, if they decide to move to other sectors. Yeah, I, I do expect that they are prepared on their soft skills on their strengths and weaknesses, on their development uh, plan, um, and they are prepared on the, the reason why they would like to, to work in that company and not in other. For which position do you recruit PhDs? Me, they are not. So, uh, in Merck, uh, the majority of the position offered to, to PhD are scientific one, but these are the majority two position in general that we have. We, we are a pharmaceutical company, so it's normal that the majority of the position are um, for um, people who have a uh, scientific background. But we, we also have, we also recruit people um, in other in other field like um, they are not uh, um, finance like uh, legal like human resources, which is normal. No, um, it's common to to lots of company. It's also normal that a pharmaceutical company recruits the the majority of uh, product specialist or uh, researcher or scientist and so on. Okay, and so and uh, me, they are not with talent acquisition, which because this is uh, for, for PhD, I think so for researchers, talent acquisition. Absolutely, I mean talent acquisition is the me, they are not company as recruitment. There is no difference. 
I'm a talent advisor. I'm a senior talent advisor. So I, I work in the talent acquisition. Yes. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Giorgia Yejani. I'm a PhD candidate. So I wanted to ask you a question about the, um, the screening of the curriculum by, for example, a software. So is it true that the trick to pass this screening is to put in the CV those keywords present in the job description? Yes, but, but uh, I mean, as I said, it means they are not uh, for for the algorithm only. This is tricky also if the if the screening is done by a recruiter in person. So it's absolutely tricky to put in the resume the um, to highlight also even in bold the 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 skills that are required in the job description. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? It means they are not. Ah, okay. Voila. Uh, so my name is Giulia Pezzi. I'm um, from Doc2. Um, I, I just would like you to, to uh, I just would like to thank you for your presentation and also um, Christina Berkut for the previous presentation because I think you highlighted something that it's vital, uh, especially for PhDs. And that is that, I don't know if I'm making up this word, if it exists in English, but that Candidability is a skill. So becoming a valuable candidate for me, they are not me is a skill. You need to learn how to apply for jobs. And it's a skill as much as problem solving, as much as leadership, as much as many other skills. And as soon as we as PhDs um, understand that, the easier then it becomes to tell our story when, when we have an interview, when we want to apply for a job. And I think what emerged uh, so far from both presentations, and I would like to thank you for that, because I wish someone had told me that me, they are not when I started looking for jobs, is that this is vital and this is very important. So, yeah. No, thanks a lot for your comment. Absolutely. This is critical, really. <laughs> Any other questions? So we can. Me, they are not. Thank you so much. Roberta Costantini, once Thanks again, you. it was really very useful uh, because they, our PhD needs to uh, to get out from, to step out from their comfort zone. So they maybe they are not familiar with these uh, topics, soft skills, uh, behavioral interview, recruitment process, and they, they have, they need to learn something uh, to be prepared. To me, they are not words, but should be, be prepared, prepared, otherwise without a, a, a preliminary preparation, you, you can move, maybe it is difficult to, to, to be hired. Thank you so uh, for, for, for your availability. And next time we would be pleased to, to welcome you on site. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Merck. And so we have I mean, they are not our second uh, recruiter invited to our round table. Um, is that Tullio Genova, CEO of Bridge to Lab, and Sara Petrillo. But first of all, sorry. Forgive me for me. And um, Sara Petrillo, Senior Recru um, Chief Technology Officer, Bridge to Lab. To me, they are not. This is a, a very a fresh, innovative uh, startup. And so, can you please present it? Uh, ah. Your, your current position, something, can you tell us something about your a short introduction, your background, your current position, because how do you see PhD, what okay. skills can you hear me? do you expect from them? To me, they are not. Thank you, yes, I'm Tullio Genova, uh, with Sara Petrillo, we want to present you our startup that is called Bridge to Lab, but before but before uh, tell you about uh, the startup, startup, I want to 
uh, tell you our story because uh, I strongly believe that we have to listen and as many stories as possible of different people. Me, they are not a different background because uh, from each story, maybe we can, we could find a, a small piece of inspiration. So I graduated uh, in 2010 in uh, biomolecular science. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, as you 10 years ago, I attended a PhD in complex in complex system, but uh, I was I, I was wor I working in uh, in a quite me they are not poor of money because there is a, a shortage of money in a lot of university a lot of department as you know this is bad this was bad but this also was good because. Uh, this force you to collaborate with a lot of people. So I started to collaborate with a very, very, very impressive number of uh, research group to do better. Science. Me, they are not. So I started also to collaborate to collaborate uh, with Sarah uh, at NBC. And uh, after my PhD, because of this shortage of money, I forced to move to another department. The Department of Surgical Science, where I work on biomaterial and medical device in general. And uh, but uh, I, I stay in strict contact with my previous. Me, they are not very strict contact. So after uh, six years, I become professor at university. But during this time. Uh, I, I I work a lot also with company, medical device company, pharmaceutical company, uh, and uh, I manage the collaboration between uh, my research group and uh, the company. And to me, they are noticed that this collaboration was very, very difficult because uh, of uh, mentality of uh, university, because uh, of the bureaucracy. Of university that is very 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 long so this collaboration was uh, not working so so well and uh, me and sarah decided to to start a, 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 a master to me they are not of fondazione crt that is was a, a great experience uh, one years every weekend and we learn a lot of things about uh, business model and about business in general so we started this uh, startup that is a spin-off for university of torino that is called bridge to lab and the aim of bridge to lab to me they are not collaboration between academia but not only academia we we have a, a research partner lab that are university lab and also private lab and uh, pharmaceutical nutraceutical uh, medical device and dermocosmetic company and and we we are a single interface for this company and you mean they are not win win situation because uh, uh, we bring a lot of uh, money to the university and uh, we manage uh, the different uh, expertise of different laboratory because a company that want to externalize his research, his research uh, some analysis uh, for this company it's very difficult to find uh, a, a, a laboratory that me they are not all uh, that meet all the needs and it's difficult to find uh, a university laboratory that is pragmatic because another problem of university lab is the uh, there is no pragmatism so academic people in general are very precise but they don't consider the time sheet of the industry and this is extremely important so we manage all the mean they are not we manage the collaboration with different laboratories and then, as a single interface, we work with industry. We have we are new we are newborn because we started uh, one year ago, but we have uh, some uh, contract 
uh, a couple of contracts with uh, the most important uh, most important uh, pharmaceutical company. So we hope we can increase me, they are not our uh, laboratory uh, network uh, also with other university and grow. I leave the word maybe to Sarah that tell you about uh, what we need uh, from people that work with us or in our network. What are you expecting from, from a PhD, do and don'ts uh, of um, a PhD when preparing? You mean they are not? And maybe your key message? Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Sara, and uh, I, I graduated in uh, molecular biotechnologies. And uh, after that, uh, I got my PhD in 2000, 2017. And then I continue to do research uh, in uh, health science uh, at uh, University of Torino. Me, they are not Meanwhile, uh, in 2019, uh, I co-founded uh, Bridge to Lab uh, with my mm -hmm. colleague. So um, I know that uh, doing a PhD might, might be very, very frustrating. I know very well. But today I want to tell you something. It's exactly there that your value is. You mean they are not? Because you learn to stay in this comfort zone. You learn to manage uncertainty. And this has everything to do with innovation and with every work connected with open innovation approach. So uh, I will give you some example. How many times it took me they are not to have uh, so many tasks to do and uh, no time at all uh, to do them by the end of the week. I think thousands of times, right? So what did you do there? Well, you learn, you, you, you find the most effective working way to meet deadlines and to carry out. You mean they are not? And this means uh, uh, to, to work under pressure, right? To work uh, with constant, uh, constant risk of failure. You have to comprehend new material quickly. You have to manage huge amount of information, right? And, uh, and um, what, what I want to say, you is that uh, you, mean they are not you do your job uh, at your best, in the best way, with the time you have. And uh, this uh, working mindset has a name, you know? The name is management of priorities and agile working. And I can tell you that everybody out there is looking for people with this feature, for people like you. you mean they are not. The only problem is that uh, they speak another language, right? So what you have to do is to understand, to learn how to tell them who you are, right? And uh, I can give you many other examples. For instance, uh, how many times uh, you go to conferences and you have to give your talk. What are you doing there? You are training your, spa your me, they are not ability. But I tell you more, what happened after you, you gave your talk? Well, there is the scary Q&A session, right? And what do you do there? You defend your independent conclusion in front of your peer. That is something difficult, is something valuable, right? Similarly, you mean they are not a battle letter after submitting your paper. You do the same. So the, the message here is uh, to be aware of uh, your soft skills and uh, 
be a, um, and learn how to tell the recruiter that you have that, those skills. And I conclude telling you that uh, me, they are not only problem solver as PhD holders, but you are problem setters, right? So um, make people know your value. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your brilliant presentation. Any questions? You mean they are not? Yes, to sum up presentations. Uh, the outside world doesn't speak uh, your language and you have to make you understand to sell yourself. So it's up to you to uh, to valorize uh, the, the all skills, all the skills you developed in doctoral training. Uh, because PhD is not only an academic experience, but also a to me, they are not experience. And maybe in Italy, uh, from the French side, is a bit different. In Italy, it is not so clear in, uh, in non-academic sectors. So it's often not clear. Merck is, uh, for Merck, it's clear because we, uh, we are lucky to, to have uh, open mind and so innovative uh, uh, partner uh, such as Stefania and Roberta. But it is not, uh, as far as I know, in my experience in this year, working with uh, this kind of... They are not... Uh, sometimes uh, all these values, these skills, uh, uh, are not very well understood from from employ by employers outside, and so they, they have to to learn how how to valorize. But we have to show because there there are a lot of trains, but we have to go to the station. So this is the message: uh, you have to sell yourself in a way. To me, they are not. And what, what do you think about what way? Um, how do you see PhDs in, in a few words? So uh, you have already explained in details, but that would be a key message in, in three words. And how do you see PhDs and in a take home message? I think take home message. PhD is a great opportunity not only to understand if I want to do me, they are not uh, path career, I have to do a PhD. I don't think this because uh, you uh, PhD uh, give you a, a special value that is not only for academia, I think, but uh, is also for company. And I think this is uh, a bias. Uh, people think uh, if I do a PhD is because I, wa I want to become a professor. To me, they are not. Uh, this is, but this is not true. I think the value of the PhD uh, is incredible as beyond this. And, and you see, they are start they are PhD, but they are startuppers. So uh, PhD graduates are really. Uh, they, they are really they have really a potential they can be employable in a in a different ways and, and believe me after uh, uh, after the phd me, they are not I'm a professor this is the goal I, I i become a professor i am a professor and i tell you after that you you say and and now what i have to do so uh, i think uh, i think you have not to believe that uh, university is the primary way and the other are not important. This, I, I strongly believe in this. It's absolutely, it is not a failure to leave academia or to it's move. It's not a failure. To me, they are not. It's not a failure. And because in academia, there are some rules. And uh, I listen a lot of people that complain these rules. But uh, guess what? These are the rules. If you don't like these rules, you go away nothing nothing else question any questions so thank you once again thank you and you mean they are not i leave the floor to our first guest pietro presti founder and managing partner eastern ventures by university park scientific committee member thank you so much for joining us today
And so, I mean, they, can you tell us something more about your current position, uh, your postdoctoral path? Why are you recruiting PhD? Because this is also a burning question. To me, they are not affecting from PhD, do and don'ts when they are applying, and the final key message. Yes. First of all, thank you very much. I thank you, University of Turin and the Association of Bernard Gregory for this important opportunity for you to better understand what are the rules under the recruitment process and what are your uh, occasion, job occasion opportunities. Um, I used now to prepare my presentation. I prefer to be inspired by previous speakers. In particular, I appreciated me. They are not good, uh, Professor Beckwith, uh, presentation because uh, she uh, told two very important things to be proactive and then carry the development. If I ask you, if you consider you as a student or PhD candidate, in Italy, we consider PhD candidate as a student, is a, a second part of after baccalaureate degree, but this is Italian disruption. In international environment, PhD is, is in a professional me, they are not dependent. Myself, I got a PhD after seven years of professional experience and PhD changed completely my professional life. Then, then I told you why. So, first of all, we need to work to create bridge academia and business and the company because sometimes, and the previous speaker explained very well, uh, when you uh, got a PhD, we are you doing a PhD, they are certainly they are not what you want after PhD. You want to find a job or you want to continue to do a research? But it's, it's, not, it's a, a, not a good question. It's not a really question because you can continue research also in a professional external activity. This is a third major mission of University of Turin to create impact, to make a difference in an area that needs expertise and a specific knowledge as a PhD students. So now we want to also change the, the, the perspective how society, not academia, how society can exploit your knowledge. But before you need to understand why you decide to get a PhD. It is a starting point, it's not an ending point, but it's not a means, it's a tool. And uh, of course, uh, recruitment um, requirement, recruitment suggestion is, is very important, but it uh, can apply for all people, not just for all PhD candidate, PhD holder. So what PhD have in terms of uh, added value, in terms of competitive advantage, in, in special sector, for example, is my experience. I work in life science and healthcare. In international environment, if you don't have a PhD, you have a, a step down. Uh, in Italy, all people that has a baccalaureate degree, we call doctor. At the national environment, no. The baccalaureate is not value as a doctor, just if you have a PhD. This is an important difference because when you compare in an in a international uh, competition environment, you also have to be competitive at yourself, not just not for the company or for the institution that you work on. So it's important to better understand your soft skill, your competences, your experience, but also your personal value to exploit your PhD. But before that, you need to be better understand why and what you want to do with your PhD, uh, um, PhD title. And this is why, because uh, I work uh, in a uh, startup field uh, to create a connection between academia, uh, research institution, pharma industry, because uh, I always, always say to say, uh, mind the gap between science and business. business. I tell you, mind the gap between research and business. And this is very important because ne we need uh, some people view, some professor don't think that business and science can be together. Is a, is, a, is a a false statement because if you want to create a, an impact on society, you will need to start by theory, by research. But at the end, you will to face the real world, and the real world is the market. Market is not a, 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 a bad expression, a bad word. Market is a real world where you you, you can find a, uh, the client, the patient. But you need to better understand that there is not. A, 
there is a, a, a boundaries between academia research and the real world, but we need to bring it together. It's not separate silos. And you can do it now. The university, like a, a presentation like today, can give you the opportunities, but also you better understand what are the dynamics outside your comfort zone. Because uh, uh, when you are a PhD candidate, as uh, me, publish or death. But after PhD, work or death. You need to, to find a job. And uh, you have the now, you have not excuses. Uh, searching a job is a job. It requires specific skills and aptitude, personal aptitude. You need, because sometimes uh, PhD students, okay, we have a specific knowledge, we have a specialization, we are here. That is not enough. PhD is a, um, is a starting point, as I told you before, but uh, you need to leverage, to create a leverage and exploiting your PhD in which terms. You better understand the, the needs of the market, the needs of the company. There are some, like Bioindustry Park that are represented today, there are some space that we bring together a lot of uh, for companies. Uh, there is an innovation cluster that they wanted a PhD candidate, they wanted a PhD holder, because uh, now we, we are facing an innovation uh, activity, as you know, and the innovation manager, also in the startup, in the 10 years, uh, innovative startups require some uh, specific requirement, as, for example, as PhD uh, human resource, PhD employees. So it's important to also to spend this uh, value as PhD, not only just for you, but also for the, your uh, um, uh, company or the or employer. Uh, this is important because sometimes uh, also the company doesn't understand, doesn't know the value of PhD. Now we are also using uh, industrial PhD. As you know, we some, sometimes exploiting them for uh, startup spin-off. Uh, there is uh, agevolation, uh, not just for fi fiscal agevolation, but also from economic uh, agevolation. So uh, it's important for the company to be aware that from you, they can receive uh, advantage, not only from economy, but also from the knowledge. So um, I think that uh, the key message is that you have to be focused during your PhD to have the best experience during your PhD, but after the day after of your PhD, you think like other people that have either an important competitive advantage in your baggage as a PhD, is represent also for you an opportunity to, to play in a global playground, in an in a international environment. This is another important point. You need to know the world. Uh, as the, for the company, now we have a global competition, you are in a global competition. And the bar is, is only just in your mind. You have, for example, important in France. You have in one hour of train, two hours of train, you are in France, Switzerland. You have the opportunity to also to, to feel the smell of the place. They have the, pla they have the place. How they combine research, science, business. How to combine people, the network. is very another important point. Your comfort zone sometimes represented by some uh, key players, key, key, key people. But you need to also to uh, have a, a other opportunity to um, exploring other networks. That's what it means that you go outside of academia, go outside from your home. Now, after COVID, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, we now we have digital communication, remote communication, also job is review. Okay, this is an important tool, it's an opportunity, but uh, don't remember that we have human beings and uh, nothing compare about uh, human relationship. So uh, you, you need to also to feel physically, in person, other context, not academic, but companies, as uh, the previous speaker speak about uh, the conference, is another important uh, occasion, place to reach and uh, to uh, better know about the new development, about the new progress, uh, to be updated. Is not that you you always be a PhD candidate at the end of your life because you always need to be updated. But of course, depending if you remain in academia or in a business field. But believe me, there are not two separate silos. You can make the difference to combine, to combine starting from the research, starting from the theory, and then to um, 
to uh, take uh, on uh, the research in a real world application. This is very important. From my side, uh, I, we invest uh, in some, in, uh, some spin-off startup that sometimes uh, research a PhD candidate. And believe me, for us and uh, for uh, startup uh, perspective, we have some uh, um, evaluation items, market, product, uh, uh, business model, and the team, people. I believe that the, the difficult part for us is to find the right people. To find the right people. Of course, we start with the right idea, but the first to find the right people is very difficult. And why? We have a lot of our PhD holder, we have a lot of people, but believe me, academia is a great. I have two bachelor's degree in the University of Turin, an MBA in the University of Geneva, and a PhD in the University of Turin in business management. So I am a fan of university. But uh, university, as I said before, um, Dr. Dr. Petrillo uh, represent a comfort zone. You need to go outside. You need to know and explore the world. Also, the business side, because the the business and the science can stay together. This is my take home message for you. And uh, um, forget all professor old professor say about business. We have we do research, business, and other things. No. Research and business can change the things on the world. They, they, they have the opportunity to make the difference. And if you see the technology and the research in, in each field, also starting by, for, the, for example, the, the last latest Nobel Prize, COVID vaccination, the two scientists find microRNA for the COVID vaccination. But as you know, vaccination is a business, it's not a science. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your very, very clear and detailed presentation. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, Julia? Someone else wanted to ask a question? No. Does it ah, okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, just wanted to thank you for all, all the three of you for, for your presentation and I have a question that it's based on my experience, but it's maybe a bit provocative, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to your answers. Would you say that uh, as academics, we, we somehow learn to fit in within some parameters, no? To be an academic, you need to do things in a certain way. But when you want to get out of academia and work, let's say, in the outside world, you somehow need to learn how to stand out in some way, so as an academic, of course, you do it in your work, but no, you, you need to, you can hear me? Okay. Uh, no, we, we, uh, you have to use, uh, otherwise. Okay. I, I, I don't know if it's too loud or is it not it's okay. loud enough? Well, what was the, can you, can you hear me? Can, can they... Louder. Okay. Now I didn't understand what was the problem. In a, when we are in academia, we need to learn how to fit in, in the rules, in the parameters, in doing things in a certain way. And then when we want to get out of academia, are we um, pushed or are we requ required to think actually how to stand out instead of fitting in? Or is it both things? No, you were talking about skills, about thinking outside of academia or thinking, still thinking about inside academia, how does it work? Is there a different a, a difference? I don't know if it makes sense if I made myself clear. I hope to understand the, the question. I, I, I think that uh, when we go outside academia, we think that we lose academia for okay. forever. You know, because as you know, professors say, okay, if you don't, you don't continue after the post PhD, postdoc, Postdoc, you you miss the, you feel the miss an opportunity for the future. Okay, what happens if I I go outside and then this is a, a natural fear, but it's not it's not true because you have a, a lot of opportunity outside of the academia. But coming back to your question, um, for example, during my PhD, I I work on the alliance on the strategic partnership between 
Pharma Industry e Academia. Sometimes they are a complementary knowledge and needs and uh, uh, advantage, for example, time, money, uh, the, the risking. And uh, if you able to knowing both sector, you are key person to, to create this bridge, to create this leaking. And what is, a, a, this is a, is a space that missing people. It's miss, just because uh, or academia or business, but now we need, need a bridging people. And uh, what uh, about PhD, PhD holder? This is the, the, the perfect people that can create this bridge. And then also that what you do yes. with your company. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I think also that if you uh, go out from academia for maybe two years and uh, you decide to come back because uh, it's impossible to become professor if I go out and then I want to come back after two years. I think it's possible because uh, if uh, one people uh, really want to, to become a professor, it's important to keep in mind what are the rules that academia needs and the rule are publication, 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 a lot, a lot. I have a lot of friends of mine that uh, do this job and at, they publish in their entire life 10 papers. It's not a... So if you go out for two years, then you come back and publish uh, six paper in a year. It's okay. So. Uh, a lot of uh, most of time people don't know what are the important things so keep habilitation keep those parameters or, or it's impossible yeah and connected with the, this point uh, uh, and maybe your question so when you spend many time in academia you adapt to those rules right so you are very attached uh, personally to your achievement uh, accordingly to those parameters. So you love your papers. And when you go out uh, and not nobody care about your paper, you are dis disappointed, right? Because all those pain, all those fighting for the first name, right? And nobody cares. So it's a little bit frustrating uh, and uh, I don't I don't have an answer, but maybe you can try so to uh, use uh, this uh, achievement. Uh, I mean, give another reading of that achievement Japanese. and uh, maybe be behind that paper. There are uh, skills that you learn. There are uh, um, other achievements uh, more hidden. Right. And you have to to rely on them maybe outside. Another question? Yes, thank you. I have a question for Dr. Pressy. Thank you. It was a very nice talk. So, for example, if I am coming from scientific background and after my PhD, I want to go outside academia and go into industry in some position where there's project management or some I don't know, business development, anything like that. So do you think um, getting a master on those topics before entering the job market could be useful or it's something you can do even after a few years you're already outside academia? Thank you. Depends in what you need to, what you want, you want to achieve. In, in, for example, uh, it's very important for you to better understand what are the driver for you about your job. Salary? reputation, uh, academic uh, reputation or position uh, in terms of geographic position. There are many drivers that can uh, also affect your choice. So depending on your career development that uh, they presented before, because uh, the master or PhD, the important things about CV is the coherence. For example, now I, I help the region Piedmont for the COVID. I was the manager, strategic advisor for the campaign vaccination, the COVID. And you, you know what? I put this information in my CV. In other information, it's nothing about my experience. It's very important, COVID, you know. But in other information, before hobbies and interest, because coherence is very important. So also the master, in, in, in the timing of the master and the children master, have to be in coherence in, with your career development. So there is not the right time 
the right time. Oh, 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 there is the right time for about your career development, but it's not a, a pre-order time to have a, a, to got to get a PhD or master. Thank you. I would uh, ask the same questions to Roberta Costantini to have a point of view as a recruiter. Maybe can you repeat, Roberta? Do you need to do the repetition of our questions, or can could you hear maybe? Well, she, I understood the question, and uh, um, I, I'm uh, how can I say agree with, with the, the with the other stakeholder, and um, what, what again I would like to to to, su to suggest to, to to flag to highlight is that when you have an interview in a company and you meet um, one stakeholder, second stakeholder, third stakeholder, and the fourth stakeholder, what they really need to understand if you are able to handle the job soon. Okay, so we are, we are not looking at so many titles, masters or mm, courses or many specialization. So they really want to understand if you are ready to get the job. And so maybe they would ask you, how did you behave in that situation? You are applying for a project manager situation. Okay, so what was your challenge? How did you face it? What were the, 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 the issues that you faced and how did you solve them? Using exactly the start method that the previous um, presenter um, uh, showed or shared. So, I don't know if this answer to, to the question of the... Um... It's clear. It's... Okay. This, thank you for your perspective, because this is the perspective of a recruiter, of a company, of a big company recruiter. Uh, and so, to, to conclude, do and don'ts of a PhD when applying, because you are used to uh, to interview every day so many candidates. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. I would not pass the message that a title is not important, not at all. I mean, you can apply for a job if you have a title, and there are lots of job positions in which the PhD is absolutely required. Okay, so don't misunderstand myself. So there are many, many roles in which we require at least the PhD as, as a, the, a job requirements, okay? But it's not enough. So do not take for granted that if you have the PhD, then you can get the job easily. This is the message. Maybe the last question for this round table. Okay. A question to all speakers. Also, which is linked to a taboo in Italy as well as in France. So I will put it in yes or no way. Um, are PhD holders better paid in your company than people without a PhD? Yes or no? No. Better PhD, yes. Paid, yeah, absolutely. I, I double my salary after a PhD. His PhD is a baseline for depending of the it depends of the sector, but for example, for the life science sector, the healthcare sector, the PhD position is well paid compared to the others. For us, uh, it's mandatory, so better, but uh, it's mandatory. PhD. Okay, so I replied no, but it depends on the seniority of the role, of course. Okay, so it's not the fact that you have a PhD or not that uh, determines if you are better paid or not, but it depends on the seniority. Thank you. Okay, so I think that this uh, we can finish because this round table, uh, really, which was really very, very inspiring. I'm sure it will. You, your key, there are lots of key messages of take home message useful for, uh, 
for our uh, participants. Thank you so much. And now you are all very welcome and invited to our coffee break uh, downstairs. Okay. Roberta, sorry that you can join us, but see, see you soon. So, have a and let's try to be back in 15 minutes.